Qual è, qual è il suo rapporto con la tecnologia? Mm -hmm. oh, what is your relationship with technology? What me, um, I was rather late in coming to it, okay? Yet I'm trying, but I was uh, still fumbling. I, my iPhone, I can do about three things with this thing. And this iPhone has so many, so many possibilities, so many things you can do with it, and I'm still discovering it. Let me just say that to you. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my knowledge on a computer, I can send emails and I can do all that sort of thing and I'm on my computer every morning at home in my office. Um, but I just use it for the basic um, communication skills with friends and stuff like that. I don't really have a great call for using or doing anything else. I, you know, I print out things sent to me and um, so, so on and so forth. Um, it's an instrument. It's a tool. I mean, it's a tool that we've all... It's, look how important it is right now. My God, I'm old enough to know when we didn't even have a cell phone. We didn't care. My God, I panic if I don't have my cell phone with me. But we got along fine without them before. We just went to a pay phone. You know, got out of order, put it in, called, made your call. Um, but we've become so, I, I, my only criticism of it is that we've become so dependent on these things. You find a, group, a, a room full of young people, and they're not talking to each other. They're all texting. It's the most bizarre thing in the world. Hello, talk to each other, look each other in the face, and talk. You know, it's basic communication skills. But um, it's a brave new world, I guess. And, uh, that's their language. It's their language. You know, this title GCB, the, the, this show, it's called Good Christian Bells, but it's called GCB because that's a computer acronym thing, type of thing. You know, that's more identifiable to the current audience than. The full title would be, and um, so yeah, I, and I, I think Tron had a little bit to do with that. If it inspired somebody to go into the technical aspect of filmmaking, especially in the computer animation world, that's where they really. Um, they did. But I've, I've had so many people over the years come up to me and, and thank me for being in Tron. You know, so back then they didn't have electricity when I was. <laughs> So I mean, and we had to go out and uh, feed the horses first. And then, uh, I've been doing this for quite a while now, so you see, we didn't have uh, electricity. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who used to be David Nichols. Okay, let's do that. You know what? I'm dying here, by the way. Oh, this, this oh, app is yeah. never going to get beyond these, this room, I'm telling you. I'm oh, dying. If I had coffee, it's all good. If you had coffee. Jordan, how are you? How are you? David. David. Yes, Bruce. How are you? David. Mm -hmm. Yes, David hails uh, originally from Hales from? Hales from originally, yes. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, where do you originally hail from? Originally from Prague, actually. That's right. That's right. Why well, should I knew that and totally forgot. We've been talking about a lot of things. <laughs> We've been talking about a lot of things. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the weekend that's drawn off. Yes. Um, I'm going to interview David. Okay, may I interview you? I was going to interview you. Oh, well, well, let's interview each other. Okay. Uh, where did you get your scarf? Uh, well, you've got, you've got a good style there. Uh, I've, been, I've been doing this since a child. I was a child actor. I, uh, I studied acting in, uh, in university. I went to the University of British Columbia on the lovely green shores of Canada. Beautiful place. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Has anyone ever been to Vancouver? Probably one of the prettiest cities in the world. Peter has. Yep. Peter will tell you about it. That's right. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. It's green and it's wet and it's rough. Peter, Peter will tell you about Vancouver over a nice tall glass of Jameson's. And, uh, if you can find any. If you can find any. Uh, and so that's where I went to university, and I, uh, when I came out in, uh, in, in 89, I think you guys heard some of the story yesterday, we did a production of White, did some Shakespeare on the beach, did a production of Waiting for Godot, which we ended up taking to Prague, uh, and that was kind of the beginning of the end. I stayed there for the, the 10 years and started founding a theater company. Really? Yes, 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 yes. We call ourselves the uh, Misery, Misery Loves Company. Is there, what's, what would be the good Italian translation of Misery Loves Company? Misery loves company. Uh, 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 it's not simple. It's not simple. Misery. 
La malinzia ma la compagnia. Grazie. Yeah, that's that, that's all. And so in in in. in Could you please speak a little bit slower so I can keep up with you? Yes. It was cold. <laughs> Yes, and then we ran, we ran for 10 years there, we ran in repertory. We grew into the largest English language theater company in Eastern Europe. And it was... that's slow. <laughs> really? Really? Well, I guess it was not really. Not really. I, guess, I guess it was. But you guys heard my story yesterday. I, I want to ask Bruce exactly the same question. Bruce, how did you get your stuff? Oh, have you guys got enough time? <laughs> I've bored them with that already. Have you heard know, that story already? See, now you come up here, we're both tanking. Uh, <laughs> God, I thought it'd be a comedy duo here. Um, oh, it's still a little come. No, not Stargate, which I, I thought was a, was a really good series. It was a great motion picture, a good series. Uh, I know Richard Dean Anderson uh, used to be a neighbor of mine. Um, I think Richard had the great, uh, it was cool. Whoever, whoever said this is a good possibility for a series, was right on. And um, you never know with science fiction. No, you don't. No, you don't. But Stargate was kind of, uh, and Stargate Atlantis, all the spinoffs, everything that had to do with Stargate, I think, uh, was the last, through the last really good show. I don't even count Battlestar Galactica as that. That's um, sci-fi. You know, I, I'm, what I'm saying is, um, what started in the early 90s with all the Star Trek shows and this, 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 this. I think yours was the last really good one that uh, you know, had a very compelling, very compelling plot lines and was sustainable as a series. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's not easy to think of a concept and you know, okay, this is a great movie or a, a couple of episodes, but my gosh, how do we do years of it? Yes, yes, yes. And they did, they ran Stargate uh, SG-1, the first one, has the Guinness Book of Records uh, record for the longest consecutive running sci-fi series. Yeah. Doctor Who, yeah, yeah, Doctor Who ran longer, has run longer with interruptions and with various <coughs> doctors in, in, in place. And that's a real testament, I think, to the, to the writers. I, I mean, let's give credit where credit is due. Uh, you know, actors, we, 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 we fill in the shoes of the, the characters that they create, but they are, they are creating the entire cosmology, the whole world, all the races, all of the, we borrowed from small towns in Canada, that's how they get their race names. Uh, they, it's true. It's true. They, uh, they have to manage the, the whole thing and, and really put it together. So really, I think it's the writers of sci-fi that, that deserve a lot of the credit in, in terms of making yeah, and and uh, Vancouver had become quite a, uh, a hub of, of, of film. It's really grown over the years. Indeed. And it's my favorite place to work. I shot all Tron Legacy there. I'm sure if we do the next movie, it will be shot there as well. Hollywood Awaiting Camp, isn't it? It is, it is. And, uh, oh, hey, another no, critic. Okay. <laughs> That's what's being really taken. He's not happy. That's okay. That's okay. It's a good boy. For what it's worth, also, I think Tron was an immensely groundbreaking. I guess you guys have covered all this, but I had a chance to Yes, yeah, so I, I think it's a, it was a groundbreaking movie. I remember, I remember, I remember playing the video games from uh, from Tron. It was a really inspiring and seminal, I think, piece of uh, piece of work. It changed. It, it, it really, if it wasn't for Tron, I don't know if uh, Star Wars would come along. Can I say that? I think well, that, no, Star Wars was just prior to it. But I'll tell that you was a, yeah. No, it wasn't because that was in the seventies. I auditioned for Luke Skywalker and I didn't get it, and that's why when Tron came along, I took that sucker right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I did. I got on that and I said, "Yes, yes, I, I don't understand it, but I'll do it. It looks kind of like some kind of Star Wars thing," and, uh, and I did. Actually, that's simplistic, but uh, uh, you know, I, yeah, it was. Uh, well, I wanted to say some more on, on the Vancouver and it's the filming. It's such a wonderful, it's a, a great filming community. You have so many wonderful artists up there and you have a wonderful uh, bank of, of uh, actors. Uh, some very, I, I work, I've worked so many, uh, so many films in Canada. And uh, every city, I think short of uh, Winnipeg and Edmonton, I think I've worked everywhere else.
You haven't missed anything. Yeah, I know. I know. But um, it's quite a, quite a. It, it really got its start because at the time, the Canadian dollar was weaker than the American dollar, and, and most of the money could have, yeah, now it's on bounce on Paris. So most of the money was uh, could have been put on the screen, which is what producers like to have, rather than uh, rather than paying for. You know, I was also going to say that a Tron Legacy, I know, put that fool away. <laughs> We're going to burn this in effigy tonight. <laughs> it's a long time to make this convention. I know, I, I know. I need to compress. No makeup on, that's the thing I love. <laughs> I was supposed to be in makeup and they didn't let me. What? You're supposed to sign that for the charity I will do that. So when you sign, you can go and leave David here, and you can rest. It's a proposal. You know, you get, is that subtle or what? It's, it's, it's a time for you to relax. <laughs> <laughs> you have a David, you know, I, I'd love to leave this stage to you now. Um, Ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to say, no, go please.